So once again, Jasmine Campbell here from Chronicle.lu, and we're back with Nicolas Zarov from Lucrian ASBL, the president of Lucrian ASBL. Um, yeah, keeping up to date with the latest news about what this local nonprofit organization is doing to support Ukrainians here and in Ukraine. Um, so welcome, Nicolas. Good to see you again. Good to see you too. Thank you. Um, I thought today we could discuss a little bit about the structure, firstly about the structure of Lucrian ASBL, um, how if it's mainly volunteer led, how the decision making structure is, and if you could tell us and our readers a little bit more about that. Of course. So uh, the last time I told that the association was created in, back in 2014, so we started really uh, 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 like with, with six, seven people. And then it started to grow in different times. We had uh, between uh, 10 uh, members that are, were active without counting the volunteers, of course, and about 20 people. And of course, for different events, uh, we are happy to have our volunteers. And sometimes, well, in the, in the usual times, we had about 50 to 100 volunteers who were coming and helping during our events. Uh, since the full-scale invasion in Ukraine, uh, the number of the, the staff working for Ukraine on the voluntary basis, uh, that's an important message actually to say that none of the core members of the association uh, is being paid. Uh, so we have about uh, uh, 20 uh, members together with the coordinators uh, who work for the association on a voluntary basis. And then we have our volunteers who are joining us for uh, different events too. Uh, we can say that uh, since 24th of uh, February 2022, we had about 2,000 uh, different volunteers who helped our associations, association uh, in different maneuvers. So there were drivers, people working on the work in the warehouse, people organizing different events, uh, fundraising events, and of course, uh, uh, we have our media team who is working uh, non-stop. So I can say that we have about uh, 50 to 100 people who are uh, more or less active on the weekly basis. And then we have a big pool of volunteers depending on the actions. Okay, wonderful. Yep. So a really big team and, and support team there as well. And so you've been moving around a bit, I believe, since the, I mean, in different offices and different facilities and also offering different activities. So maybe you could elaborate on, on this. Yes. So as any organization, we need space, space to work. Um, uh, so we started with the offer of, uh, uh, of uh, our friends who were proposing different warehouses to collect the humanitarian aid, but we also needed offices to work. That's why... Uh, the city of Luxembourg proposed us uh, a, a center, actually some rooms uh, where we started to um, give the information for the refugees in the very beginning. And then we uh, also um, opened the library over there. And since the 1st of June uh, of this year, uh, thanks to KPMG, we, we have uh, uh, about 800 uh, square meters of office space where we bring uh, a lot of more people to uh, study the language, doing uh, other workshops, and of course, uh, our offices were uh, our team work on the permanent basis, on the weekly basis. Okay, perfect. And am I right in thinking it's also a kind of um, cultural center, training center, or is, is that in the no. office or is that somewhere else? Well, uh, it's a bit mixed now. Um, what we uh, do understand is that uh, there is uh, a big problem with the language barrier, and we try to cover this uh, issue first. So we give a lot of language courses. We have about 12 groups uh, studying French and English. And of course, we are doing uh, different workshops uh, concerning entrepreneurship, uh, integration courses, uh, uh, everything about Luxembourg. And also we have even some groups some sport groups doing dances, uh, different activities for children, uh, yoga. Um, and I can say also that we, we are proud to announce that uh, we will have a, a, a small theater um, uh, okay. uh, soon uh, in, uh, in, I think it's 26th of, uh, of July uh, for our volunteers, by our volunteers, for our volunteers. So it's like an internal 
uh, small body, but uh, um, a serial place is uh, uh, one of the workshops we, we do in our premises. Brilliant. That sounds, that sounds amazing. Really, really exciting. And of course, in the area of culture um, and related to culture, you know, obviously we know that language is, is very important. And recently we had, um, let's say, the, the city of Luxembourg um, offering a gesture of solidarity to, to name this new national road linking Hesperange and, or Hovald and Hesperange to Luxembourg Gare in Luxembourg City after the Ukrainian capital. But of course, there's been some uh, debate concerning the language used, uh, Boulevard de Kiev, which is coming from, well, we know from transliteration from Russian, but is also the official word in French. And um, perhaps you could you could share your Ukraine USB, ASBL stance on this and why language matters. Um, yes, indeed, language is a, a very important uh, aspect of any uh, country um, in Ukraine. Uh, we have suffered for uh, hundreds of, of centuries of years uh, of banning of Ukrainian language by, uh, by Russia, or Russian Empire at the time, Soviet Union. And now we, uh, we are fighting to uh, uh, at least to, um, to pronounce our capital uh, and other cities uh, in the Ukrainian. We are grateful for everything that uh, uh, at the, at the support that uh, the city of Luxembourg uh, shows and provides uh, to the Ukrainian uh, nation. Uh, but we would really happy. Uh, we would be really happy to see uh, the correct translation of uh, of the capital of Ukraine with a K with an Y. And I think it's important to say that uh, um, it's not about uh, grammar but mostly about the uh, health matters. And uh, we were talking a lot about uh, who are the main stakeholders um, of this question. And we, we can identify, of course, that there is a, a, a city council, uh, the Ukrainian community, Luxembourgish community, and uh, Russian community. So in this way, uh, we uh, see that the Luxembourgish community does not really care whether it's Kiev or Kiev. Uh, so we are left uh, with uh, three main stakeholders who are uh, Ukrainians, Russian, uh, and the, city, the council of, uh, of the city of Luxembourg. So we suppose if we show this uh, sign of solidarity with Ukrainian people, we should uh, do it on 100%. Otherwise, it will be considered as a small victory for, 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 for the Russians. That's our opinion. And uh, we believe that the... Uh, the, the transliteration of our capital will be changed. It, it, was, it has been changing a lot in the um, last three, four years. The campaign was launched by the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Ukraine. And we hope that uh, the French version, French transliteration will be officially changed to rather soon. Perfect. Yes, because I understand that um, at least in the English speaking media over the past few years, it has um, it has, the campaign seems to have been quite successful, but most English language newspapers and um, people are adapting or are using the, the Ukrainian um, transliteration, um, Kyiv. And um, yeah, maybe we'll see in the coming days, weeks or months that changing in French. And then obviously we'll see with the city of Luxembourg as well. Um, I know there's been some talk that it will be changed. So I guess we'll have to, to wait and see. We, we really hope that the right decision will be uh, made uh, and we are once again uh, thankful uh, for this uh, solidarity um, action, uh, but uh, let's do it 100% uh, um, Ukrainian. Sure. Wonderful. Um, well, that was all my questions for this week, Nicholas. Um, thank you so much for your time. Um, yeah. You. For, the, for your time, actually, and um, I'm always happy to uh, to see you on the weekly basis. And I think we will have uh, uh, different, many more different topics to discuss next time. Wonderful. Yes, looking forward to it. Thank you so much. And until next week.